Good morning. Can you hear me all right? Okay, good. Maybe my own ears are clogged. I want to welcome you to worship, even especially if you're visiting this morning. We're glad that you're here. And to those of you worshiping online, if you have any joys or concerns, please put those in the comments, and we will make sure to get to them, and welcome to worship as well. I hope that all of us here, we're here for a reason, and we're here to, in some way, worship and experience God, and I hope for you that today during this service, that happens. So if you are able, would you please stand and sing our opening song this morning, number 545. We'll do verses 1 and 2 and 5. Good morning. Please join me in the call of worship. The God of all creation makes us in one flesh. Let us join hearts and voices in praise. In Jesus Christ, we are made one in the Spirit. Let us be united in truth through the same one Spirit. We practice our faith in many different ways. Yet we confess one Lord Jesus Christ. We render different forms of ministry. Yet our calling is one because Christ is undivided. Rejoice, people of God. The risen Christ is among us, calling us together at his one table. Praise the Lord. We continue with our unison prayer. Please join me. God of Amen. unity. We come before you, dismayed at our own divisions. We have struggled as your church to live in unity, but we are divided along the fault lines of our societies. The ruptures in our families, among friends, among denominations, among nations are wide and deep. When we attempt to get on the same page, we build taller walls and dig deeper trenches. God, help us. We know that Christ is not divided. We know that it is your service to which we are compelled. You have called us to proclaim the gospel, but we even fight about what that is. Help us, God. Help us give up our power and our privileges. Help us to yield for the sake and the cause of the cross of Jesus. Help us to want the unity you share. 
for you are one. In you there is no division. Help us to embrace and to live the foolishness of a life emptied of power and given to service in the likeness of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Help us to walk in salvation in the name of the servant Christ. Amen. You may be seated. The first scripture reading today is from Psalm 27, chapter 27, verses 1, 4 through 9. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Should I fear anyone? The Lord is a fortress protecting my life. Should I be frightened of anything? I have asked one thing from the Lord. It's all I seek, to live in the Lord's house all the days of my life, seeing the Lord's beauty and constantly adoring his temple, because he will shelter me in his own dwelling during troubling times. He will hide me in a secret place in his own tent. He will set me up high, safe on a rock. Now my head is higher than the enemies surrounding me, and I will offer sacrifices in God's tent, sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and praise the Lord. Now, Lord, listen to my voice when I cry out. Have mercy on me and answer me. Come, my heart says, seek God's face. Lord, I do seek your face. Please don't hide it from me. Don't push your servant aside angrily. You have been, you have been my help. God who saves me, don't neglect me. Don't leave me all alone. Our second scripture reading today is from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 10 through 18. 
Now I encourage you, brothers and sisters, in the name of Lord Jesus Christ, agree with each other and don't be divided into rival groups. Instead, be restored with the same mind and the same purpose. My brothers and sisters, Chloe's people gave me some information about you that you're fighting with each other. What I mean is this, that each one of you says, I belong to Paul, I belong to Apollos, I belong to Cephas, I belong to Christ. Has Christ been divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in Paul's name? Thank God that I didn't baptize any of you except Crispus and Gaius, so that nobody can say that you were baptized in my name. Oh, I baptized the house of Stephanus too. Otherwise, I don't know if I baptized anyone else. Christ didn't send me to baptize, but to preach the good news. And Christ didn't send me to preach the good news with clever words so that Christ's cross won't be emptied of its meaning. The message of the cross is foolishness to those who are being destroyed, but it is the power of God for those of us who are being saved. Thank you, Dana. We're going to try this standing up today. I have a bum knee in case you haven't figured it out, but we're going to try. Today we're moving into learning more about the process that I started last week that I called a roadmap, MCCI. It has a lot of different names. The initiative that we were chosen for is one of seven churches in the state of Wisconsin. Now this initiative is funded about 90% by the conference. We paid a very small portion of about $2,500, which did not come out of our budget. A generous donation from a church member covered this because they felt it was important for us to keep learning and growing as a community of faith. So I'm gonna start this morning with a little bit more on ex actually what that means and what we're doing and how, to, how you participate in this initiative. The conference calls it MCCI and that's what's on the slides, but we're calling it our roadmap. So CI titled it, or whatever we want to call this. It's the Missional Church Consultation Initiative. It's not a program that we're a part of. It's resourcing from the conference. It's focused on assisting us with what comes next for our congregation. It will provide training and support. I go once a month to meet with the other six pastors. And it, it's sort of to help us jumpstart our ministry a little bit coming out of COVID. So Katie, next slide. What does it entail? If you can't read this, I'll read it for you. It's a monthly meeting for myself. Um, there are and will be mystery worshipers that come to us to provide feedback on their church experiences. Interesting. We will be doing a self-study, which is starting up soon. Brian Swenson is leading this um, portion of it to gather information about our church our history. So those of you that have the history in your brains, we're going to need you for this. So the history of our church, the statistics of our church over the last few years, and things like that. Then there'll be a refocus, uh, resource refocus event that anyone can come to. We're hoping to do it either during a messy church event or between services. It's just once again gathering those people that maybe didn't hear this presentation, just getting everybody on board with what comes next. The big thing is, and this is your part, is the listening sessions. Now, we're not doing them as the leadership of the church. The conference is sending people in to do them. They will come and actually stay in our community for the weekend, and we will um, feed them. But then you all get to come and talk to them. They'll have some questions to ask you. They'll be um, listening for what you've been hearing as we've been praying the breakthrough prayer for a year now um, they'll be asking where you see god at work and what you dream for this church so then after that they'll come back during worship and they will present a report to us of all of this information and what they've heard us say that we want to do as a church i don't get the report until saturday and you all get it on sunday Everyone gets a copy of the report, and they will walk us through it. Then after that, we can sit with that report for about 30 days, and we can decide whether or not we want to move forward. We don't have to do anything. 
The prescriptions that they get us will come from all of this information that, they give, that we give to them. So if we say, for instance, that we want to grow a specific program in our church, then the prescription also gives us a coach, and that's the most important thing, is someone to help us impl excuse me, implement that program the way that we want it. So you can go to the next slide, Katie. So our step one has been our breakthrough prayer, the 738 prayer. We're asking for and what God wants us to do and to be in this community. Step two, study of our church, gathering all that information. Um, now, mystery worshipers might not be someone we don't know, okay? So just so we get that out there, they might be someone we know. Next slide, Katie, step three. I talked about the resource refocus event. What is this all about? Gives you a chance to ask questions. Step four is the listening sessions. So I want you to keep that in mind. As soon as we're ready to roll out that date, I will let you know. And then what's the next one? Is that the end of it? Oh, the final report. Any more slides, Katie? That's it? All right. So that's where we're at. If we vote yes, we get, and we have to vote on this. As a church conference, we vote. It has to be 95% yes, and then we get coaches for as long as it takes. So that's what MCCI or roadmap is for us. Now, if you notice, carpool is cool. Yes. Let's take a look at what Paul said to the church in Corinth. Chloe, and we don't know who Chloe is, except that she had a concern and obviously somehow she was knowledgeable, if not involved in, some of the infighting in the church. Paul was in, in Ephesus at the time, and she reports that divisions have opened up in the church. That would never happen. I don't know where she got that information. People are identifying themselves and aligning themselves with specific preachers based on their baptism. And it appears that some of the members of the Corinthian church were taking the notion of a pastor filled with the spirit of Christ perhaps a bit too literally, with the result that that pastor became so important as the voice for Christ that those he baptized began to identify themselves with that baptizer instead of Christ. The congregation was falling into personality cliques, each claiming their partiality for a different preacher. One faction claimed to be following Christ, although whatever they meant by that is not clear, and in making this assertion, they actually only made the entire division in the church a whole lot worse. There's not the slightest suggestion that Paul or Apollos or Peter or whoever they were aligning themselves with had done anything to encourage this or that they wanted personal followers. In fact, Paul was a little shocked to hear this. So he sends this letter, and he is urging everyone in the Corinthian church to be in agreement and have no divisions among them and be united in the same mind and the same purpose. That should be the end of the story, right? Yeah. Perhaps you want to say to Paul, what were you thinking? <laughs> Get real. Can we really agree on everything, or is, is united even possible these days? Well, Paul was certainly aware that everyone in the church was maybe on a different place in their spiritual journey, because further on in this letter, he actually refers to his own time of ministry when he was there in Corinth, and he says, I couldn't speak to you as fully formed spiritual people. I was actually talking to you as infants in Christ. I fed you with milk. I didn't give you solid food because you weren't ready for it. He then adds, even still, I don't think you're ready for it. For as long as there is jealousy and quarreling among you, are you not of the flesh and behaving according to human inclinations? So brothers and sisters, Paul says, stop acting like babies. Yeah. In calling them, he says they were being merely human. So in calling them merely human, he wasn't saying that they hadn't received Christ. He was just saying that they weren't being dominated by Christ in their lives. They were be, being caught up in human failings instead. So what exactly does spiritual maturity look like in the church? Well, we're going to start by talking about the carpool lane. Hear me out. Being spiritually mature as a church is a work in progress. 
because certainly one of the markers on our way to spiritual maturity is that we realize that Christ is the only one who is flawless and that we are always, always a church on a journey. Regardless of the ages of us, some of us are in different places on our spiritual journey. In fact, it's possible that some of us just get stuck in our spiritual journey because we like where we're at. But in order to move forward on this journey as a church, we have to be working to improve how we reflect God's love out in the community, as well as how we reflect God's love to each other. The next step is to drive in carpools. To that end, each of us should be both a recipient and a donor of spiritual nourishment and encouragement. We should be helping each other, which is why I think the road to spiritual maturity is intended for carpools, for vans and for buses. We don't each drive our car on this journey. We need to carpool. And when you're in a carpool, you don't have to agree with the person who's in the car with you on everything, do you? No. What's your purpose? You're going somewhere together. So we can talk about together about what God is doing in our lives. We can share the struggles and we can testify to the victories. That's why we have our God sightings and our sharing together in church and why sometimes that takes longer than the message. And that's okay because that's part of our worship. We should be asking for things from God for people on their behalf, but we should also be sharing each other, with each other, how God is at work in our lives. And we don't have to be best friends with the ones that we're riding in the carpool with. We don't even all have to be Packer fans. We only have to agree that we're heading in the same direction towards the same destination. And we have the road map. And that is to be in the same mind of Christ. Now, in a church that's moving ahead, we can't say that my spirituality is deeper than your spirituality. Yes, some dear souls have a lot to learn about discipleship, but we also have to be willing to support each other with prayer and encouragement. And all of this is done by recognizing that we're in the carpool together. In verse 18, the last verse of today's reading, it says, For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Although it's the last verse of our reading, it's really the lead sentence of a section where Paul speaks of the remedy for churches who are dealing with infighting. We proclaim the Christ crucified, and if you're going to boast about anything, make sure that you're boasting in the Lord. This is verse 23 further on down in the reading. The message version of this is my favorite. It says, if you're going to blow a horn, blow a trumpet for God. Because God is our model. Christ is our model. He's the one that we should be emulating every time we deal with each other. All the more reason to remember that we are a work in progress. We're on this journey together. We're in the carpool lane. And we're modeling Christ. These are the primary tools that we use to be on the road together, on this journey together, to be the church that God wants us to be. May it be so. Amen. If you are able, please stand. Our next song is actually all about this. Number 560, Help Us Accept Each Other.
are in your bulletin, I do want to start with a thank you. Um, Miss Linda is out for a couple of weeks. It is a prayer concern as well. Her nephew died unexpectedly, and she is spending some time with family in Missouri. So, Emily, thank you for just jumping in. We really appreciate it. Yay. Yes, I think that. Did you get one of these? Yeah. yeah. Okay, our envelopes are coming. So if you're used to using envelopes, we decided to make some for you. We found some old envelopes that have just been hanging around in storage. And so we put the information on it that you normally would see on your giving envelope. And so you can use these. If you need more, um, we have some more that we can give you. We're hoping to have our envelopes. They, weren't, they, were, they were not ordered late. It's the company that's running late. So we keep calling every single week. You know I mean, that's right? Yeah, yeah. How's it going, Britt? It's not great. It's not. Right now. <laughs> okay, it's not fun to be in customer service and envelopes right now, apparently. So, um, yeah, if you need more, we'll just keep putting these in the bulletin. We have plenty of envelopes laying around here in little storage places. So, um, we hope that you can use them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Supply chain issues. There are our announcements in your, on the back of your bulletin. I want to call your attention to, if you are interested in being a member, I will be in the chapel today at 945. Um, otherwise, if you just have questions about it, let me know if you can't make that. Um, Valentine's Day cookies. Are we good with Valentine's We are. Okay. Messy Church is coming up already on February 1st, and so we've been looking for Valentine cookies, but I think we're good. Youth group will meet on February 4th. There are cookbooks for sale. I think we have enough greeting cards. Um, I saw a big bag come in today. You haven't seen that yet. Um, yeah, we have plenty of greeting cards to give to uh, Sue Schultz, so we can cross that one off if you were going to go home and clean out your drawers. The other announcement is that our special mission is still on for UMCOR, for the Ukraine Advance for this month, so you can even use that same envelope. It's got an other category at the bottom. So, Are there any other announcements that I missed? Yes. Um, speaking of envelopes, there are financial statements in the back, in the box. I tried to hand out as many as I could. If yours is missing, I did have a little trouble with the program spitting out all of them. So let me know, and I'll make sure I get you one. Robin's got the, the statements. The end of the year statements are right there in the back. Grab yours. Um, you, if you also visit someone and you know that they're not coming to church, just make sure you grab that one as well. Um, and if you, there's not one for you, let us know. We'll get it. Anything else? Okay, now we're going to talk about God's sightings. Oh, Kathy, go ahead. Joy's. The big joy. My son David and his wife Hannah had their had a baby yesterday afternoon. A little boy, their third boy. Um, eight pounds. And uh, mom and baby are very healthy and happy. That's great. Kathy Hack reports that uh, David and Hannah had another boy, their third boy. No name yet, so you know we're all waiting on that. They haven't named him yet, but happy and healthy. Yeah. How? Uh, yes, Renee. We all we, well. We had the opportunity to pick a star word, and I liked my star word so much. I thought, oh, I walked past the basket. That's awesome. If you didn't get a star word, there are baskets on your way out. Grab a star word because that's part of how we are looking at God in our lives and in the world is how does God work through your star word? Um, Renee reports her God sighting is that she picked a star word, loved it so much that she decided to pick another one and got the same word. God can work through things. Um, I want to share the God sighting that our leadership board got together yesterday. Everyone who could make it was there, and it was amazing. We um, talked about the process of leadership and how we are communicating and how we need to be better at communicating in some areas. And so if you have any questions, are there any leadership board members here today? Would you please? Yeah, look at them all. 
Why don't you all stand up for a second? These are the members of our leadership team that are here at this service. Look around. If you have any questions, concerns, or anything that you want to share, these are the people that we talk to. Okay? Thank you. And thank you for your leadership. Claire. Adeline and Nora are in Frozen 2, right? Is that Frozen Junior? Frozen Junior at the middle school this year. Performances will be in April, so watch for that. That is a, that is a joy. Any other ways that, yes, Britt? Um, just prayers for uh, Penelope's other grandma. I had asked for prayers a while back. She had COVID, and she has emphysema. Um, she kind of finished with COVID, but she, her oxygen levels are still dropping, and she's back in the hospital. Um, her first name? Okay, prayers for Chris, who is Penelope's other grandma. She finished with COVID, but is still having problems with oxygen. So we will pray for her. Andrew. Um, there was an outage last night at North Perry Park. Do you want to go? Uh, oh. So uh, prayers for the victims. Thank you for sharing that. I did not. I usually read the paper or the news in, on, online in the morning, and I did not today. Um, there was another mass shooting in... Los Angeles at a Chinese New Year festival. Today is the Lunar New Year, and so um, wishes to all of those who celebrate that, but sadness for the fact that someone thought that they should open fire, and we pray for those victims. Cindy. Awesome. So um, prayers for Katie and for uh, Josh and Logan. Um, Katie's home. The baby Diana is holding her own. This is a niece of Cindy's. Prayers for them. Any more? Yeah, I see a couple hands. I see all kinds of hands. Let's start with, we'll go this way. Brad. That's a prayer concern? <laughs> It is a joy and a prayer concern. There we go. Happy birthday to Taylor. <laughs> okay, Linda. Thank you, Linda. Prayers for the family of Mark Vanderyot. Your brother in law, Connie. Prayers for Connie's son in law's family as his mother passed away. All right. Kate Warren offers a huge shout out and a huge thank you to everyone who helped with Family Promise. She wanted to make sure to say thank you. We have our people, there's a group from the church that's actually on a cruise, so they're wishing us good morning from somewhere warm while we're dealing with the snow. Um, Linda shared it that the, um, her nephew's name is Brad Patterson, so prayers for peace and comfort for the fam family of Brad Patterson. Emily. What's his first name? Sammy. Sammy. Prayers for Sammy, who got over COVID but now has mono and is dealing with an enlarged spleen and some other complications. So we will continue to be in prayer. God is truly at work in our world and in our community, and it is a joy, even when the things are hard and a privilege to be able to sit here and listen to all of us be willing to share with each other. Let's pray. God, you call us into agreement with one another, and you urge us to end the divisions among us, but we don't even know how that's possible. Sometimes with our jaws set, we grip 
tightly to our own perspectives and opinions, ready for battle with anyone who would challenge us. We worship the God of being right. Desperate to belong somewhere, we claim allegiance to our own tribes, tribes of doctrine, of politics, of social location. And we know that this is not your way. Your way is excellent. Your way is relationship, discipleship, neighborliness, servanthood. Your way transcends the dim truths that we might fashion from our earthly assets. And your way seems impossible for us to imagine. Help us to imagine it, God, as we come here to worship. Let the fellowship we have while we are sitting around tables continue when we leave. Help us to imagine sitting down together and breaking bread. Help us to leave this table and imagine doing that with everyone we meet. Show us how to drop our nets filled with our e meager catch, which we clutch to ourselves, so that we can catch even more. Teach us to share. You have a better identity in mind for us. Make us into your fishers of people. Or perhaps we must simply allow ourselves to be caught by you first. Let us be one community, a tangle of faults, yet held in your net of grace, because this is your way and we long for it too. Be with those that we have lifted up today and for all those that we have not named and are on our hearts. You know their needs, Lord. Amen. We continue to pray in the prayer that Jesus taught us to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And we continue with our breakthrough prayer. God, we lift this up to you in prayer. Please do what we cannot do ourselves. We need you to break through into our lives, our congregation, and our community. Use us together for unimagined new purposes. On behalf of Christ, break through any barriers that stand in your way and hold us back. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. God is the source of all good gifts, and God gives us all that we need. And in joyful response, we offer our gifts, the fruit of our labors, and the dedication of our hearts in loving service for all that God has given us. Would our ushers please come forward?
join me in our unison prayer. Holy God, as we present our tithes and offerings in worship, we know we come from a world that is tearing itself apart due to division. Even among your followers, we find ourselves shutting down and closing ourselves to those who don't think or act as we do. We need to be reminded that you desire unity and one mind from your children. Not a church void of disagreement, but one where we work at listening in love more than working at speaking louder and winning the day. We dedicate not just our gifts, but our minds to the work of your unifying love. In Christ we pray. Amen. Now our closing song, we're going to do something a little different. We've probably never done it here. Go with it. I'm going to ask you to step out and to step out of your aisles and to make a circle if we can, if you're able. Let's see if we can do this. I gave you some very vague directions. Those who are organizers are going to be like, uh-oh, how do we do this? <laughs> you do not. You do not have to hold hands, okay? Huge sigh of relief. Holding hands is not required. You can come all the way around, yes. You can use the chancel. You can use the whole sanctuary. From everywhere. We are making a big circle. This is awesome. I absolutely love this. We went all the way out. That is such a theological symbol of the fact that we are not just in this church, but we are out. Let's sing our closing song together. Let there be peace on earth. Jesus Christ is the head of the church, we are his hands and feet in the world, and that we should be doing that work that begins and ends with love. So go with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, and all God's children said, Amen. Amen.